filbert transformation can be done using low pass filtering well you never thought you'd hear me say that it's a special arrangement which you can learn about by having a look at weaver single sideband modulation let's see this curiosity here is a model operating at 20k samples per second uh, sampling rate just for illustration purposes I'm using a so-called carrier frequency of 4 kilohertz to show the whole thing operating I have the three different techniques that are in most textbooks and uh, I'm pumping them out and stripping out the upper and lower sidebands uh, and exa examining those depending on how I toggle this let me toggle it to the first one uh, I'm looking at the uh, first method's output uh, and this is going to be the uh, lower sideband and this is going to be the upper sideband and of course the whole point of this business is to uh, not have to transmit the total bandwidth complete with this redundant information which formerly was right residing down at uh, down at DC, this Hermitian symmetry, uh, and, not, and not put out the redundant information, thereby freeing up uh, capacity to put twice as many channels of data in. Well, this technique here is, uh, I'll just touch base with it, it's not very interesting. It's a double sideband uh, transmitter suppressed carrier, uh, and it's just a uh, uh, a brute force technique where I slam this through a, a, a upper filter, uh, a bandpass filter, and also a lower bandpass filter, strip those out and pump them out. So not very noteworthy except for the pointing out that this is being done in this case uh, at so-called uh, RF at the transmitter frequency and in general would be done at some intermediate frequency, some IF, which might be inconveniently high, making it difficult to have your components operating at that frequency, uh, and then subsequently having to do m another stage of up conversion to get it all the way to RF. So clunky, not nice, not very interesting to me, uh, but of course you can do it that way. This way is the standard way these days because of course now we have DSP, and we can be uh, um, easily dealing with the phase shift job that has to be done in this method. It's called phasing or Hartley sometimes. Go inside this block and now I see that the key thing we're, we're putting here is a Hilbert filter, good quality filter. Algorithms for designing is easy. Uh, it can be much bigger than this one and get the ripples down even smaller whatever. Uh, and uh, of course the hardware can operate fast enough for quite broadband operation at baseband. Here we then have the untouched version of the signal uh, with, uh, of, of course, a, a group delay to accommodate the same transport delay is happening on this pathway. And then all I've got to do is add or subtract to strip out upper sideband or lower sideband. So important way you would normally think of doing it that way. But I want to look at this because I'm going to think about 1956. 1956 is when Weaver came up with this, and in those we, days, we did, that's a, a half a century plus now uh, ago, and this, we didn't have uh, DSP, we didn't have uh, particularly good ways to doing uh, wideband phase shift filtering. So it was thought to be convenient to make use of uh, the quite uh, advanced state of low pass filtering, but we got to make it act like a wideband minus 90 degree phase shifter and that's where the fun starts so if I go inside here uh, and look at this I'm going to look under this mask and see the structure well at this level it's not very interesting it's again add or subtract if you've got your hands on the <coughs> real part of the signal and the uh, Hilbert uh, part of the signal you can do just exactly what we did in the previous method but let's go inside this block to see how we're doing it we're going to feed out the analytic signal. I remind you that the analytic signal is the signal plus J times the Hilbert of the original function uh, coming in. So if I go inside here, uh, we're going to do this in a sort of unorthodox manner. I'm going to have a low pass filter sitting here as the main actor. And it's going to be preceded by a down modulator and afterwards there's going to be an up modulation process which is just the conjugate of the other one in complex terms and this is coming 
uh, down then at uh, 5 kilohertz, well in fact minus 5 kilohertz is going to be the shift we put on this baby and uh, that's a quarter of the sample frequency in use. Uh, so let's look at this scope trace and try to figure out what's going on. Uh, go to the inner most, most one. Here's the white trace coming in. So here back in our model it's coming in like this. This is the white trace. It of course is Hermitian symmetric because here at DC we've got this sym symmetry of the real and imaginary part. So this is well known. We then propel this thing down to minus 5 kilohertz by means of this multiplication operation showing me on the yellow channel. So let me get rid of the white one and there I am. I mean I've got the thing modulated down it's got nothing up here and it's got too much down here. I still want to get rid of and trim off this bit that's sticking back here. I can do this with a filter. Oh, what kind? A low pass filter which extends from minus 5 to plus 5 kilohertz. Never mind the fact that this is empty up here. So I go to this next scope to see that happening and I go to the inner two here and let me get rid of the yellow one for the moment uh, uh, sorry the white one for the moment and this is what's coming in so this is this exactly this line right here coming into this scope it's coming into this filter its job is to slice out everything which is between minus 0.5 and plus uh, sorry minus 5 and plus 5 kilohertz so if I show that I'm doing a pretty reasonable job of it. I get rid of the yellow one, uh, and there it is. I've now expunged this uh, irritating extra bit down here, which I really don't need and don't want, uh, and I'm well on my way to having an analytic signal. It is, however, residing at the wrong place. I need to propel it up to be uh, uh, located right here at zero frequency. Well, that's going to be the job of this multiplier this post multiplication operation which furthermore uh, a factor of two scaling so that right here there will be residing an analytic signal it will be pumping out pumping out and getting uh, treated just like the other uh, the other uh, structure that we had up here of uh, the normal way so we have changed we have exchanged the business of Hilbert transformation with uh, pre and post multiplication within between having low pass filtering and we still get a, a same good sort of result.